Hey class, welcome back once again for another episode of Math One Distance Learning. So we've been working on translating expressions and we've been working on specifically word problems, phrases and sentences and these small little, little stories. And um, so today we're gonna continue um, translating and um, breaking down uh, word problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. And your lesson today is called writing math stories. I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to my DocuCam. And okay, so writing math stories. This it should be practice number one here. And you're gonna to wanna to refer to these uh, notes that I already gave you. So this authors at work, um, I did a video that went with these notes where we were learning to use pictorial representations, okay? And then specifically at the back of this lesson or at the end of this lesson, you're gonna wanna use these story starters. I gave you these story starters in another set of notes in another video um, on story starters for money and hiking elevation. And uh, so there were positives and negatives. So you're gonna wanna refer to that as we go through this lesson. Okay, so you've got, I believe there are 10 or 11 questions in this handout. I'm going to do uh, the odd ones with you, the odd numbered ones, and then you're going to have to do the even numbered ones for your homework. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a pictorial representation, right? That's using the tiles and pictures to match each story. And then we want to write an algebraic expression to match the pictorial representation we came up with. Okay, all right, so here we go. We've, we've already practiced these, but we're gonna do, a, a, these are some new ones. Okay, so Veronica bought a shirt. She then bought a pair of shoes for $30. How much did she spend all together? Well, if she's buying a shirt, is that when you buy something, and you think about your bank account or your piggy bank, are you adding to your piggy bank? Are you subtracting? Are you multiplying or are you dividing? So if you're buying a shirt with your own money, what, what are you doing? That's right, you're subtracting. It's a negative concept. Now, we don't know how much the shirt was, right? The question says, how much did she spend altogether? Well, this is an unknown amount. It doesn't tell us, right? The shirt wasn't $30, the pair of shoes was the $30. We don't know how much the shirt was. And so therefore we are gonna want to use a tile. Now, the reason I colored it red is because it's negative. It's negative money. It's money being taken out of her bank account. So I colored it in because that's how we represent in tiles um, that something is negative. She's buying a shirt money's being taken out of her account. We don't know how much is being taken out. Okay, so here's our pictorial representation. And now we wanna change that to an algebraic expression. So if this is an unknown, we wanna use a variable. And since she's spending that money, we wanna make sure that that variable is negative. So this would be negative x, and then minus 30. She spent 30 more dollars, right? She bought a pair of shoes. So negative X minus 30. Okay, number two, you are going to do on your own. I'm not gonna do this one with you. I'll read it with you. Carla has $83. So we know how much she's starting with. She gave some money to her brother. How much does she have left? Okay, so you're gonna to need to do a pictorial representation and then you're gonna to need to do an algebraic expression. Okay, she's starting with 83, she gave some money to her brother. So you have to think, if she's giving money to her brother, is she adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Okay, all right, here we go. I'm gonna do number three with you. Carlos has three bags with the same number of candies. So he has three, we could think of like Halloween, not gonna sure, sure if we're gonna be able to go trick-or-treating this year or not, 
but so he has three bags with the same number of candies. He gave 12 candies to his brother. How many candies does he have all together? Okay, so he has three different bags, but they all have the same number. So we don't know. That could be, each bag could have 50 pieces of candy. It could have 10 pieces of candy. It could have five pieces of candy. We don't know. So if we don't know, then we're going to draw a tile. So he has three bags. There's candy in there, so it's gonna be positive. We don't wanna shade it in. It's not, it's not negative. There is candy in there. There's candy in here and there's candy in here. All we know is that he gave 12 pieces to his brother. So he might've taken them out of here or out of here or out of here. Okay, we don't know. All we know is there are three bags of candy. They each have the same amount. That's why we made them the same size. And then minus 12, we made our tiles the same size. If this was a different amount, maybe we'd change that to a triangle, okay? Or if this was a different amount, we could make it a circle, all right? So now we need to translate this to an algebraic expression. So if that's unknown, that's unknown, and that's unknown, let me go ahead and put our question mark, we don't know, we don't know, and we don't know. So since we don't know, we would write 3x minus 12. This would be an x, this would be an x, and this would be an x. So 1, 2, 3, 3x, I'm sorry, I said plus 12 would be minus 12. He's giving 12 pieces of candy away, minus 12, 3x minus 12. Okay? All right. Um, you're going to have to do number four on your own. Let's go look at number five. Okay, so on number five, it says Sal shared his money evenly among his four friends. How much money does, how much money do each of them now have? Okay, so do we know how much money Sal started with? We don't. It doesn't tell us. It doesn't tell us maybe he had $100, maybe he only had $4. We don't know. It says Sal shared his money even, evenly among his four friends. So if he's sharing it or splitting it evenly among his four friends, is that adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? If he's going to share his money, he's going to divide it up, that would actually be dividing, right? He's going to share it. He's going to give some to friend number one, some to friend number two, some to friend number three, and some. And they're each going to get the same amount. So what we're going to do is we don't know how much Sal started with. That's unknown. But we know we're going to divide it among four friends, right? We're dividing it four friends. I'll go ahead and put the word friends in there. And this is where you could actually draw stick figure if you wanted to. You could draw four, four stick figure friends to help you remember there's four. Okay, so now we need to translate this to an algebraic expression, to an algebraic expression. Okay, so if this is the unknown amount, if we don't know the amount, what do we do in algebra? We use a variable. So we could write it like this. Write it like this one second cover this up okay so we could write it like this right here so this is sal's money and then we're dividing it by four or we could write it like this this would be kind of more the elementary way to do it sal's money divided by four okay and then there's one other way that you could write it is you could write it like this. You could say one fourth of all of the money. So how much money does each of them now have? So each of them is going to get one fourth of Sal's money, right? So here is his amount of money. We're dividing by four, his amount of money dividing by four, or you could do this one fourth. Okay. All right. So those are one, three, and five. You need to do two, four, and six. Um, you're gonna do the same thing. And then, now I'm gonna turn the page. 
Okay, and now you are going to have to write stories. And this is where I would suggest you use your story starters that I told you about. So on this first one, I'll do number seven with you, and then you're gonna have to do eight, nine, and 10 on your own. So you have to do a story that has to do with hiking. So you're writing a hiking story. You write the story, okay? All right, here's the picture though. So here's your picture. You need to make a story up. So here's an unknown amount. We don't know what the amount is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a question mark because that's unknown. And then we know that we are adding 25. Okay, so if I was gonna go look at my hiking, so I'm, here are my positives. So you hiked up, you climbed up, you ran up. Okay, so let's see. So here's the story I came up with. While visiting the Mayan ruins, right, the Mayan ruins, that's down in uh, Ecuador and Peru. No, Mayan ruins, I'm sorry, that, that's a different uh, culture. The Mayan ruins are in Mexico, right, Mexico. Um, I was thinking of the Incas. The Incas are in Peru. Mayan ruins are in Mexico. While visiting the Mayan ruins, I hiked up. Okay, so while visiting the Mayan ruins, I hiked up a certain number of stairs. So this is my unknown number of stairs. I hiked up a certain number of stairs. After I rested, I hiked up 25 more stairs, okay? So I hiked up a certain number of stairs. That's my unknown. After I rested, I hiked up 25 more stairs. So you can go ahead and copy this one for number seven, but now you're going to have to write the story for number eight, for number nine, and for number 10. So on number eight, you are going to do a temperature story. So you've got the number 70, and then this is an adding. So here's an unknown amount, and then you've got a minus 10. So you're gonna do a temperature story. That's an unknown amount. Okay, so you've got seven, eight, nine, and 10. On number nine, you are doing a money story. So you're gonna do money, so you've got an unknown amount, divided by three plus 20, that's gonna deal with money. And then on the last one, you have a temperature story. You actually have to create the picture and write the story, okay? All right, so we're working on writing these word problems. And the reason we're doing this is, let me go back to look at you. So. The reason that we're working on writing the stories, writing the word problems, is if you're able to write a word problem, then you're probably going to be able to solve other word problems. Learning how to write the word problems and create the pictures is going to help you um, when you're taking a test and being able to use logic and critical thinking um, to be able to read and understand a word problem that's given to you. Okay, so go ahead and finish those up, and I will uh, see you um, at our next class. All right, talk to you later.